behind me is our desiccation uh, plots. This is looking at a time of year where you're trying to kill down the uh, plants. It's a tricky job to do because you've got a, a plant that's growing quite vigorously and you need to stop growth quite quickly to get seed potatoes that are fit and healthy for next year's farmers to plant again. The plots that we have here are um, uh, field scale plots but we also have replicated plots over the other side which are our AHDB replicated desiccation plots and we, we look not only at um, chemical control but we also look at mechanical control. The desiccation part of the seed pro process has a, a, quite a big uh, influence on the following season's crop so depending on what desiccation treatment's been followed and how well it's been carried out uh, has a, does uh, make a difference in next year's crop. Certain methods uh, I'm a bit old-fashioned, uh, flailing in a seed crop was always frowned upon for spreading uh, pectobacterium and I think although flails are better than they used to be, uh, I think if there is uh, black leg present in a crop uh, it needs to be assessed as to whether you do use a flail to, in the desiccation process. It's definitely varietal, variety specific. Uh, I've seen a difference this year. Innovator, which you can see at the far side there, uh, that was desiccated probably, I think, 10 days before this crop. But we have Innovator in other fields and they've been very easy to, you know, cope quite happily without Diquat and Innovator. But the daisy that's at the other end there, I must admit that I was a bit nervous last week when I was putting on the T3, but thankfully it's, uh, it's worked. These are all the AHDB replicated trials. Uh, it's all done by hand. I think these trials are really important that uh, we'll look at all the different treatments in a, a replicated forum like this that uh, then we know gives us an idea how we move on to the field scale trials that we do ourselves. These trials will be just like our own, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll all be harvested and they'll be assessed for passive bulking. Obviously for seed growers we're, we're interested in uh, stopping them as quickly as we can uh, because we have this, a seed fraction uh, generally 50 or 55 mil top riddle. Uh, so it's important that we get the timing right when we're, uh, when we're giving them their first treatment. I think there's a lot of innovative uh, treatments here there's a heat that we see, saw a huge difference in the pelagronic acid this year just because we actually mechanically tilted the crop so that the pelagronic acid was going on the underside of the leaf rather than the top of the leaf and it's night and day the difference in between last year and this year and it actually stands out as one of the better treatments this year and that was the only difference. The desiccation treatment has a, ultimately has an effect on the next crop. Uh, with different levels of black leg and this year, although we haven't seen leaf roll for 20 years, as a result of the desiccation trials, we've shown that the treatments that were slower uh, have a higher level of virus. Losing chemistry, you know, we're going to be under increased pressure, so we'll have to do everything we can to alleviate that. Personally, uh, if we can do it without a flail, it definitely speeds up harvest. I think on our soil types, and I emphasise that, it's, uh, we've, uh, there's clay in our soils. Uh, where the flail has been, then it compacts the side of the rows and creates clods. I think we've shown this year that while we've, we've got regrowth in four of the flailed green treatments, so we used car carfentrazone as a, as a T1 and uh, left flailing it green seems to give the plant the wrong message. It's given it a growth spurt uh, rather than a chemical treatment that's actually shutting the, telling the plant to shut down to start senescing.